I love you in the service tonight. How many of you are glad to be in the Lord's house? Anybody? Amen. Appreciate all of you being here tonight. I tell you what, let's stand together. I want you to shake as many hands as you can in under a minute. Go! <laughs> something you can't even remember doing. Amen. You know, deacons do that to preachers every now and then. Come on, brother. All right. He's going to help me sing. 648. I'll fly away. He, he, he said something about, if y'all remember, when in the, in the, you may have had on the month, the black mm -hmm. month, or youth of the month, he said yeah. that's something he wanted to do. So I thought Amen. we'd give him an opportunity Amen. to start. Yes, so we're going to, and I appreciate he's, he's been practicing and thinking about it here a couple of weeks. That's good. <laughs> All right, 648. Good little singers. 
That's good. That's Amen. A, folks, that's your church. Okay. Amen. That's a church of tomorrow. Amen. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Just step across the page there. Skip across the page or glide across the page or look on the next page. 649. <laughs> <laughs> Mansion on the hill. you being in the house of the Lord and it's good to be saved. Amen. amen. I tell you this is a, a, a crazy world that we live in. Somebody say amen, amen. to that amen. and uh, full of hatred and strife and, and divide but I'm sure glad that I've got my name written down amen. in the Lamb's book of life. How many of you know that you know that you saved amen. and that heaven's going to be I'm glad you can know. Amen. You know tonight if you don't know, you can get it nailed down, Amen. and you can know that heaven's going to be your home. Well, tonight is a, a special night here in the house of the Lord. As our, our friend, Brother Ralph, he asked uh, last week or so if he could give his testimony, share a testimony about what the Lord's doing in his life, and that thrills my heart. Amen. Amen. And so, Brother Ralph, you come up here, and you're going to see what I see. And uh, don't let them scare you. They won't bite, all right? Brother Ralph, we love our brother. 
and appreciate him. You let him know you appreciate him tonight. I'm glad it's not Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I came here from Florida, and, uh, you know, he sh the Lord started working on me before I came. And, uh, you know, first he introduced me to Bill and then Beth and uh, Travis. And he's been working on my life all the way. In these last six months, most of you know, I've been struggling with uh, cancer, and it's in remission, and that's by the grace of God. And, uh, you know, he's asked me to do some tough things, and... Uh, I've never not did it when he said it. And one, you know, is very, is was very tough to do, but it was done when he told me. And some of you know what that is. And, and you know, I can tell you that Anything he asks you to do is do it when he tells Amen. you. Amen, and, uh, you know, the toughest things he asks you to do, he's not asking for you because he knows the end of the story. He knows exactly what you're going to do. Amen. But he puts you there to show you how much trust you have in our Lord. Amen. And uh, I have complete trust no matter what he tells me to do, I'll do it. Amen. And uh, he's brought me a long way. He introduced me to all of y'all. And, uh, you know, uh, y'all just bless my heart. To, you just don't know. And... Uh, you know, Florida's where my children live and my grandkids, but this is my home. And right in this this building here is my home. Amen. And every one of you are brothers and sisters. Amen. And I just want to thank y'all for being with me the whole way. Amen. And thank you. Amen. 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 How many of you are thankful for Brother Ralph tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, we sure love him and appreciate him. He's been a blessing to us so much. And uh, I'm so glad for all that God has done through Brother Ralph here in the church. And uh, <clears throat> now you, you were considering a move. But. He told me to stay here. <laughs> and so. Brother Ralph been praying about it, and he was going to be moving to Florida, but he, he called me uh, back and said, you know, the Lord told me this is where I'm supposed to be, and I'm going to stay here. And I, I decided we'd let him. What do y'all think? And so we, we love Brother Ralph, and I'm so thankful for him and the blessing that he is. And, and all of you young people, right there's a good testimony of even in the toughest times, if you'll obey the Lord. Uh, there's nothing better than being obedient to the Lord. Amen. So I appreciate that. How many of you are thankful for that beautiful testimony tonight? Amen. I tell you what, at this time, uh, before we dismiss our young people, let's go ahead and have prayer together. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, share with you, Brother Glenn, uh, he had uh, sent me a message, and, and he had stepped in a hole on Monday. And... Uh, and hurt his foot. Well, he went to the uh, hospital, <clears throat> and uh, everything checked out. Well, uh, his leg has been swelling real bad from the knee down, and it's just got worse and worse, so they're going to the Murfreesboro emergency room this evening. He said he was in such pain that he just couldn't stand it, so 
Remember Brother Glenn <clears throat> in prayer. Also Sister Amy uh, went back to the hospital this week with COVID again and pneumonia. And now the update today is that she's doing some better. So uh, one thing's for sure, Amy Robinson is a tough lady. <clears throat> Amen. And so we need to be praying for her and lift her up. Uh, that the Lord would, would have His way in her life. You know, none of us are really in control of any of that. Life and death, are, they belong to the Lord. But I do believe God keeps people here till He's ready for them and, uh, or until we learn lessons from them. Sometimes God keeps people here so we can learn a lesson from them uh, before He calls them home. But uh, remember her in prayer. And just quickly tonight, anybody else with a prayer request this evening? Yes. Remember Andrew and Katie, uh, they're under the weather tonight. Sister Lori? Amen. Remember, remember Sister Lori's mom and dad and their sickness and Sister Lori's uh, kind of a caregiver for them. So pray for her. Brother Ricky? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Brother Derek? Remember little Addie. Remember Ronnie. He had a CT scan done Monday. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Remember Brother Ronnie in prayer. To, yes, sis. Remember my family. I've been trying to get them to come to church over here. Hope and pray that they will. Amen. Amen. Amen, sis. God bless you. Yes, sis. Amen. Remember that. Remember Gina's daughter Elizabeth. She comes to church here some. That's uh, Bentley and Scarlett's mom. She's going in tomorrow to be uh, have her baby and to be induced. And so Charity is going to be with her during that delivery. So uh, pray for Charity. She's over there and they're getting ready to go in early in the morning. And uh, pray for us. Hannah turns 18 tomorrow. And I, <laughs> I can't believe it. So... We're one step closer to having me a big office in that house. I'm just going <laughs> to... It'll be in that back bedroom back there. So, Anyways, I guess I better keep something in there in case they come. I, y'all told me they always come back and bring more with them, right? So I have to remember that. Anybody else tonight? Absolutely, sis, absolutely. Remember Miss Hattie in prayer. Sister Beth, did you? Ellen Clayton. Remember Ellen Clayton in prayer. I wonder about <coughs> Amen. Amen. Remember my son, Michael. He goes next week for to the surgeon. Okay. To set that up. And I've got a brother-in-law that's in Cookville Hospital that he had COVID and now it's pneumonia. Mm. And they can't get his blood pressure there. Remember him and in I prayer. I have a good result test uh, Friday that my surgery's on. It's okay. Wonderful, wonderful news. Yes. Mm-hmm. She fell Saturday morning and cracked the rib above her cheeky. Mm. So Bless her heart. Her. She's had a long time in recovery. Amen. Remember her in prayer. Yes. Amen. All right, all those with unspoken requests might show that by a raised hand. Let's gather around the altar if you can. I would advise you to get down where you can push up on something to get back up. <laughs> Just trying to help you folks out. <laughs> May have to start employing some altar workers. <laughs> All right, friends, let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this time and every lesson of life. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. Lord, what a beautiful evening you've given us to be in the house of the Lord. Father, I thank you for the testimonies that we've heard tonight, the prayer requests that we bring before you tonight. Lord, we just pray that you would bless those and, uh, Lord, help those. Lord, we pray tonight, <clears throat> Father, that you might work in a special way in the needs of your people. Father, 
pray this evening, God, that you be with Brother Derek and his family as they lead our young people. Lord, I pray for Elizabeth and the uh, delivery tomorrow of her baby. God, be with her. And uh, Lord, may everything go well. I pray you be with Charity and Hannah tonight. But Father, we thank you for who you are and what you do. We thank you for all of your people. Lord, we've heard tonight several reports of good test results. We thank you for that. watching on the live stream, God, that you would help them to, uh, Lord, feel the touch of the Lord, and uh, Lord, to grow in grace as we look into the Word of God. We pray that you bless this church, God, we want to be a light, a beacon, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Uh, Lord, we want to be, uh, Lord, that candle that can't be hid under a bushel, Lord, that we might bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, Lord, we just pray that as we open the Word of God and as Brother Derek opens the Word of God to our young people, Lord, that the, the Word of God would feed hungry souls. Lord, we realize tonight there's so many people that need a touch from the Lord. And God, we pray you'd touch people. We pray for Sister Tawana tonight that you'd be with her. And uh, Lord, maybe others that uh, we've uh, forgotten. Lord, we pray for... Uh, Sister Hensley's family, God, that you'd speak to them, that they might get in church. And uh, Lord, tonight, would you just help us to, uh, Lord, to get into the book and uh, to grow in grace and knowledge. And Father, in all that you do tonight, we're going to thank you. We're going to praise you. We're going to honor you for all that you do. For we pray these things tonight in the name that is above every name. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. And amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm going to ask you to all stand together. We're going to uh, dismiss our young people at this time. And uh, for those that are staying in the service, I want you to turn to Ecclesiastes tonight. It may take you just a moment to find that. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 uh, this evening. And give you just a moment to find that. How many of you are glad you know the free pardon of sin tonight? How many of you know all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? But is anybody glad that His love has covered a multitude of sins tonight? And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I want you to turn over there uh, to the book of Ecclesiastes. And, and uh, we're going to read chapter number 1. Now I, I do want you to understand tonight... Uh, that Ecclesiastes is kind of a different book. And if you've ever uh, read that, you're going to see uh, that it is quite different. But we're going to be over <clears throat> in chapter 1 of the book of Ecclesiastes. And I want to talk to you tonight about finding value in your life. Now we're going to be reading several verses tonight. So if you found Ecclesiastes, would you say amen? amen. Let's go ahead and read it. The words of the preacher, the son of David... King in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteneth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. In unto the place from whence the rivers come, hither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this is new? It hath been already of old time which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. 
I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Now catch this, verse 13. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Father, I thank you for your word tonight, and I pray you'd help us to dive deep and find the value of life tonight. And Father, we're going to thank you for what you do. We pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Let's give the Lord some praise in his house tonight as you're being seated. You may not understand a lot of what we've read, but we're going to talk about it tonight. But let me ask you a question as we begin. How many of you uh, had or have had a pet? Let me see your hands. How many of your children had pets? Can I see your hands? I know some of you have had some interesting pets. Now, my kids have had pets their whole lives. Uh, Of course, we've had the usual dogs. I've never been a fan of cats. Down through the years, we've had fish. Uh, down through the years, they've even begged every time we go to the ocean, they want a hermit crab. How many of you have ever had anybody ask for a hermit crab? Some of you have had some crazy things. Some of you have had snakes, and uh, some of you have had gerbils, and Noah even had a ferret for a little while. But one thing they never asked for, Brother John, and I'm glad, was a hamster. I'm not a fan of hamsters. Did anybody in here have a hamster? Let me see your hands all over the house. God bless you tonight. Y'all are ham stars this evening. Uh, But one thing I was thinking about is I had read an illustration about a lady whose daughter wanted a hamster. And the lady was thinking about hamsters. And Brandon, uh, she was thinking, you know, they live in a cage, right? And and, uh, you feed them, you water them. You clean their cage, and then, Brother Ricky, you just repeat the cycle over and over. I mean, hamsters don't go to work. Hamsters don't go to school. Hamsters don't do this or that. But, Brother Philip, you just repeat the cycle, and it's almost pointless. And worse than any of that, Brother John, and you raised your hand so you know this, while people are sleeping, hamsters are awake. And uh, so they're nocturnal. And uh, Brother Philip, one of the things about a hamster is uh, in the middle of the night you'll hear that squeaky wheel going uh, because hamsters love to run on that wheel. How many of you have ever seen a hamster get on one of those wheels and go to running? The interesting thing about that tonight is this, Miss Hattie. Those hamsters make a lot of noise and they do a lot of exercising, but they never get anywhere. They live almost a pointless existence. You feed them, you walk water them, you clean their cage, at night they get on the wheel, they're going as hard and as fast as they can, but they're not getting anywhere. And I want to ask you a question, have you ever felt like that? How many of you have ever felt that way? How many of you have felt like you made a lot of noise, but you didn't get nowhere? Or maybe that life was the same old, same old. Every day. How many of you have ever gotten a rut? Can I see your hands? And how many of you have ever just felt like you're in a routine is the same thing? You know, you know how it is, right? You you get up in the morning, uh, you shower, you you go to work, you come home, you eat, you shower, you go to bed, and you do the same thing Tuesday, and you do the same thing Wednesday, and you do the same thing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Look at that hamster, by the way, hadn't that awesome? And uh, and and you do the same things over and over. You get up, you go to work, you come home, you eat, you go to bed, right? And like the hamster on the wheel, you make a lot of noise along the way, but do you ever just feel like you're not getting anywhere? Well, sometimes we feel that way. And sometimes life feels like it's so repetitive that it's boring and dull. But tonight I want to talk to you about how to find value in your life. because, And I want to get this right out from the beginning. You and I that are alive and breathing owe everything we have to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And tonight, no matter how mundane or meaningless or routine your life seems, you are more than a hamster on a wheel. You are somebody that God loves and God created and God wants to bless you. And so I want to talk about how do you find joy in your job? How do you find happiness in the everyday happenings? How do you find meaning in the midst of the miserable? Because sometimes living in this world is plain miserable. Come on, somebody. How do we find joy? How do we find peace? How do we find happiness? Well, I want to tell you, in the book of Ecclesiastes, this is basically King Solomon's journal. How many of you have ever heard of Solomon? Raise your hand. And King Solomon, he was, Brother Derwin, as wise a man as ever lived. But what he's going to tell us in chapter 1, Mike Schultz, is this. Everything under the sun is vanity. Everything under the sun is worthless unless you have God in your life. How many of you know life is not worth the living unless you've got God in your life? And so listen to this. Brother Ricky, it's incredible. Solomon was a wise man, but listen to everything he tried. He tried, Josh, he tried everything there was to try. And he writes all of this down. And and I just want to give these things to you. He tries wisdom. He was the smartest man in the world, but he found no happiness there. He, He tried wine. But he found no happiness there. This is all in Ecclesiastes. Can I tell you something? Is it not amazing that people get drunk to be happy and they sit there and whine and cry and belly ache? Hello, would somebody say amen? Amen. Now look, he said, I tried wisdom. No happiness. I tried wine. No happiness. If you know anything about Solomon, he had all the women. Hello. Y'all ever read that book you got in your lap? He, he found no happiness there. Can I tell you something? You will find no happiness in relationships. You will find no happiness in money. You will find no happiness in possessions unless you first find your joy in the Lord. Y'all with me? And so he's writing this book, Ecclesiastes, or the book of the preacher. And he's saying, look, I tried wisdom. I've tried wine. I've, he, he had wealth. You know, isn't it amazing how many people think if they get money, they'll be happy? Can I tell you something? Money multiplies trouble. And then you have family members start visiting and you didn't even know had family. I saw something today. I hadn't been following it. But, but they said, Barry, that there were some disappointed people in the lottery because there, I guess there was a Powerball. Is that right? Those of you who play the lottery, help me out here. <laughs> Boy, some of you, your wife. <laughs> what they said, John, was 16 people got all the numbers right except the Powerball. So they all having to split 16 million dollars. Well, gloom, despair, and agony on me. And, and the, the newspaper article was, Disappointed people only win $1 million. Well, I got news for you. That $1 million won't bring happiness. But can I tell you where you can find happiness? Jesus. How many of you know He's where happiness is? How many of you believe there's joy in serving the Lord? So here is Solomon. Stay with me. And he's saying, there's no joy. There's no. It's vanity. Wine, women, wealth, wisdom. No joy. Because life without God is a pointless life. Look at verse 5. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. Let me give you three things here. He says, The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down. Have you ever felt like life is repetitive? How many of you just do the same thing all the time? Right? I mean, if it ain't wiring one thing, it's wiring another. If it ain't building one thing, it's building another, right? Uh, I mean, it, it's just repetitive. It says the sun goes up, the sun goes down, the sun goes up. Have you ever got to where you just feel like you're just same old, same old? Come on, somebody. 
And then look at this. So, number one, life is repetitive. Then look at what he says in verse number six. Have you ever seemed like, felt like your life was directionless? Verse number six. The wind goeth toward the south, turneth about unto the north, it whirleth about. Have you ever been confused? <laughs> God bless you back there. Have you, I mean, the wind blows to the north, it blows to the south, it, and then it whirleth. Have you ever felt like you were in a whirlwind? Have you ever felt like you didn't know which way to turn, what direction? I mean, that's how life is, right? And so sometimes it seems pointless. Sometimes it seems repetitive. Sometimes it seems directionless. And then look at verse number 7. It says, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Have you ever felt like it was just never going to end? <laughs> Things are never going to get any better. Of course. Solomon was the wisest, wealthiest man around. And he said, this life under the sun is vanity. It's pointless. It's worthless under the sun. But if you're going to find value in your life, you're going to have to go higher than the sun. You're going to have to go higher than the stars and higher than the moon. And listen, how many of you have ever heard somebody bellyache? Now, would y'all perk up a little bit? How many of you have ever heard somebody that was just gloom and despair? Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. Now, poor old Solomon, he's on a roll, Josh. He said, well, and by the way, some of y'all that love to study the Bible, you need to take verses 5, 6, and 7, and you're going to find out that before scientists knew all of this stuff, the Bible told it that rivers run into the ocean and how the winds are blowing in circuits. You ever heard of the jet stream? How did the Bible know that? Nobody else did. Because God made it. Now look at this. Verse 8. Anybody feel like all you ever do is work? <laughs> look at all things are full of labor. Some of you need to go back to work. You're retired and now all you do is work. Look at this, verse 8. Everything you see doesn't satisfy. Have you ever went somewhere that you read about and when you got there you thought, is this it? Let me tell you something. I went to San Antonio, Texas to remember the Alamo. How many of you have ever seen it? One, two, raise your hand if you've been to Alamo. Three, boy it's memorable. About this tall and this wide. <laughs> little Is it not? Little old building. You Remember the Alamo. I mean that thing. McDonald's has got that thing beat. You ever been somewhere and you... How many of you have ever been to a restaurant and you heard it was the greatest of the great and you went there and it was... <laughs> Come on. Without God, everything you see will disappoint you. Now see this, look at verse 8 and he said, even the things you hear will disappoint you. You ever hear anything? You know, it disappoints me to hear things I hear at Walmart. I listen to everything, y'all just don't know it. I mean, sometimes I'll be sitting at a restaurant and I'll say, Charity, shh. I'm listening. <laughs> Come on, nosy Nelly, somebody say amen to me. But what I'm telling you is life without God has no value. Life without God is repetitive, directionless, never ending. All you do is work. What you see won't satisfy you. What you hear won't satisfy you. Where do we find meaning? How do we make life enjoyable? How do we find the value of life? Get this and write it down. You've got to have the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything under the sun is vanity. That's why you need a higher purpose. Now I want to get into this. Our purpose is higher than the sun and stars, Brandon. It's heaven. To find value in life, Ralph, you need to live your life for something bigger than yourself. You need to live your life for God. Amen. I want to talk about this. When you align your purpose with God's purpose, incredible things begin to happen. 
That's when life becomes of great value. We need to find our purpose in the Lord. And when we find our purpose in the Lord, Brother Philip, we get more than just a purpose. We start receiving the blessings of God. And I'm going to tell you, has God not been good to everybody in this? Somebody give me a good witness and a testimony. How do we find value in life? It's mundane, it's meaningless, it's devoid of joy. I mean, many of you are working six uh, to six and seven to seven and working all the time and, and uh, you don't have much and you're struggling. How do you find joy? You've got to find what God wants you to do. Amen. And then you start doing it. And when you find His purposes, you get His promises. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe God's a promise keeper? Raise your hand. And then you get His provision. When you do what God wants you to do, God takes care of you. Now, I don't have everything, but I've always had enough. Somebody tell me, how many of you believe God's been good to you? Now, how do you find the value of life? Find His purpose. Then you receive His promises. Then you receive His provision. Then you receive His power. And best of all, you get His presence. How many of you are glad He's with you today? How many of you felt His presence in your life? Thank God! When you find purpose, you'll find value in your life. Let me illustrate this for you. Because some of you are living your life for everything but God. But true, meaningful lives are lives lived for the Lord. That's when you can enjoy life. Let me, let me give you an example. You begin to enjoy your surroundings. Brother John, when I go for a walk in the woods, it's no longer I'm just walking in the woods, I'm walking in God's creation. You see the difference? I'm not just walking among some random trees. When I'm walking in the woods or I go to Fall Creek Falls or Burgess Falls, I start to think, this is because of God. That's value. When I sit down to eat, ladies and gentlemen, I have been on the biggest egg kick that ever was. And why they have to be so expensive right now, I don't know. But I have eaten eggs and I have eaten eggs and it won't be long. I mean, I'm telling you. How many of you ever get on an egg kick? Can I see you? I mean, today alone, beloved, I think I've had six. Two in the morning, two for lunch, two in the evening. Now you ask me, I'm losing weight and you ain't. <laughs> buck, 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 buck. Eggs, 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 eggs. In fact, when I go home, I have done told myself... I'm eating an egg when I get home. I'm counting on it. They're good. Put a little cheese on them. <laughs> well, don't be a rotten egg, Grady. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You begin to appreciate your possessions. I don't just appreciate my dinner now. I say... Thank you, Lord, for this food that you've given me. When you have the Lord in your life, you don't take for granted the people in your life. You say, thank you, Lord, for friends. Thank you, Lord, for the people you've placed in my life. Do you see the difference? We've got a world of people out there, Ricky Hale, that are living a meaningless existence and they're discouraged and they're distraught and they have no purpose in life. But brother, when you serve the Lord, He gives you a value to your life. And even in the difficult circumstances of life, a man can get up and say, whatever God tells you to do, just do it, amen. You stop taking for granted your job. When you align your purpose with His, it's very easy to get sent into spiritual orbit. (laughs) You ever went into spiritual orbit? It helps some of you. Well, you just lose your mind and go to having a spell. What do I mean? If you're really where you want to be with God, Travis, it don't take much to send you into orbit. Sometimes it happens you're laying in the bed and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost whispers to you and says, aren't you glad you've got a bed to sleep in? And you say, "Woo! thank you, Lord. 
Are you in the shower? And the Lord says, Ain't it good that I let you have running water in your house? I hope you understand that most of the world would give anything to have what you have. How many of you make $5,000 a year? Raise your hand. You say it ain't none of your business. Folks, that's so low. If you, if you don't make five, that's surely we draw $5,000 a year. Did you know that's more than 95% of the world draws? Your perspective is wrong. Where you stand determines what you see. You better be glad God let you be born in the United States of America. And God has blessed you beyond measure. Somebody give the Lord some praise in His house. You need to find the value in your life. We all get tired of it. Some of you need to go into spiritual orbit every now and then. Find your purpose in God, you'll find the value of your life. Find the pleasure of life. Find the provisions of life. Does your purpose match His purpose? What is your purpose? Everybody look up here. What's your purpose? What's your purpose? To make money? To retire? To be well known? Or is it to make an impact on your family for Jesus? to make society better, to share Jesus with your community. If all you're living for is so one day you can reach some mythical goal that's going to make you happy, you've been lied to. Why is it we think we're going to step into some realm at some point and all of a sudden we're going to be happy? You can be just as miserable with money as you can without Where does value come from? It comes from Jesus. It comes from being saved. It comes from knowing the Lord. It comes from having a purpose. Now, I want to tell you something tonight. There's five questions I want to ask every person in this room. Everybody that's alive, say amen. Amen. I didn't hear you say amen. Amen. Come on, say it a little louder. I want you to determine your purpose tonight before we leave. And I want you to answer these five questions. I'm telling you folks, the value of your life is dependent upon finding what God wants out of you and doing it. Now, number one, if you're with me, say amen. Amen. Get ready. These ought to rock your world tonight. If you could do anything for God right now, what would it be? Anything. What would it be? If you could do anything for God right now, what would you do? Then why ain't you doing it? Why ain't you doing it? Oh, I'm sure some of you, it blowed your mind when you saw us selling shirts. God spoke to my heart the other day and said... We're trying to have tent revivals up north. We've got three of them this year. And I'm cutting back my other revivals. The church is my priority. But these men let me preach. And I think I ought to preach. I'm called to preach. I'm not going to be gone a lot. But, and I, I'm saying, Lord, how am I going to have a tent? Y'all know what a tent costs? 5000 6000 Some of them's 10000 The Lord said, well, sell some hoodies. And I said, sell some hoodies? This ain't Walmart. I said, impossible. Andy Patterson, a clothier. (laughs) And the sweet Holy Spirit whispered in my ear, the only thing impossible for you is what's impossible for me. And hallelujah, there's nothing impossible for him. What do you want to do for God? Why ain't you doing it? Nothing's impossible. Y'all still with me? Number two, what's your favorite excuse? And why are you still using it? What's your favorite excuse? And why are you still using it? Oh, they'll talk about you. They already do. Somebody will make fun of you. They already do. Ain't none of us supermodels in here. Well, speak for yourselves. That's what some of you are saying. What's your excuse? 
If there is a dream in your heart, a vision in your mind, a burden on your soul to do something for God, why aren't you doing it? So what's your excuse? Why are you still using that excuse? Somebody said the most unprofitable item ever invented is an excuse. I'm going to tell you something. Most of us can come up with an excuse. I want that t-shirt. I might sell t-shirts next. I may get that shirt that says, I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't want to be here. (laughs) I love that shirt. Sorry I'm late. I didn't want to be here in the first place. But we make excuse after excuse after excuse. I can't do this. I can't do that. Let me tell you, with God, all things are possible. Find your purpose. You'll find your value. <clears throat> Number three, y'all still with me? <laughs> what are you putting off today that you also put off yesterday? You put it off yesterday, you're going to do it today, but now you put it off today, you're going to do it tomorrow. That is called procrastination. And some of you have a spiritual gift of procrastination. <laughs> How many of you have ever procrastinated? Come on. How many of you remember when you was in school and you had a test and you didn't study for it until the night before? And some of you, so ignorant, you slept on your book. You thought it'd get in there. <laughs> Did how'd that work out for you? I'm going to start sleeping on the Bible, Brother Phil, and hope it gets in there. Procrastination. Brother Ricky, I know you love good war stories. I heard about a general for the British Army in the Revolutionary War and and a courier came and gave him a letter and the letter said George Washington's army is approaching the camp and he was playing checkers. And he took the letter and he put it in his pocket and continued to play checkers. And he died because he procrastinated reading that letter. What are you putting off today that you put off yesterday? You need to get it done. Let me tell you why. Procrastination is the fertilizer that makes trouble grow. Some of you are sitting around waiting for your ship to come in and it's going to be hardship. You better get on with it. Can I tell you something? You're not getting any younger. You're not getting any younger. Is anybody alive in this place? How do I know that you're getting old when you can't walk past a bathroom without thinking I may as well pee while I'm here? (laughs) Your back goes out more than you do. You sit in a rocking chair and can't get it started. That little old gray-haired lady you helped across the street, your wife. And every time you see a pretty girl walk by, your pacemaker makes the garage door go up and down. (laughs) Oh, brother. Time is short. It's running out. It's appointed unto man wants to die. What are you going to do for Jesus? If we're going to do anything for Him, we need to do everything for Him. And we need to start now. Jerry Clower said, do what you can with what you got and do it now. Do it now. Put your excuses behind you. Put your procrastination beside you. You know you're getting old when you sink your teeth into a stake and they stay there, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> number four y'all still alive Amen. this one works me over right here what would your life look like right now if you were the most thankful person you knew what would your life look like right now if you cut out the belly aching and the grumbling and the complaining and focused on being thankful 
You want to take your spiritual temperature tonight, examine your gratitude. Let me give you two quotes. Helen Keller said so much, and you know who Helen Keller was, said so much has been given to me that I do not have the time to think about what I don't have. Folks, God's been so good to us. Come on, somebody. Listen to this one. The pilgrims made seven times more graves than huts. Nevertheless, they set aside a day of thanksgiving. Think about that. What if you were the most grateful person you knew? Do you have any blessings in your life? How many of you have blessings in your life? How many of you believe they're more than you can count? Anybody blessed beyond measure tonight? Find your purpose and you'll find the value of your life. The value of your life is not just in a number or an occupation. The value in your life is that God made you. He created you fearfully, wonderfully. He loved you so much that He died on the cross of Calvary. He loves you so much that He's preparing a place in heaven for you. Your identity is not of this world. Your identity is in Christ. That's where Joseph is. That's where value is. Somebody give him glory in the house of the Lord. You're more than a hamster on a wheel. You were created with a purpose. Here's the fifth and final question. When was the last time you said, wow, I can't believe I did that for the Lord? Isn't that a question? When's the last time you said, wow, I I can't believe I stepped out and did that for the Lord? You know, on Sunday morning, and what a wonderful service Sunday morning was. Still feasting on that. I tell you, sometimes we're so spoiled, we go from service to service and forget how good they are. But you know, to see Sister Linda and Brother Ronnie step out of their comfort zone, as he said, and sing, man, that's awesome. That's the kind of stuff when you step back and say, I can't believe I did that for the Lord. You know how that was the first time you got up to sing or to teach and you're standing there and Brother James, you've taught. You stand there and you say, I can't believe I just did that. I mean, after I preached my first sermon, it was three minutes long. Well, some of you long for the good old days. (laughs) And I step back and I say, "I, I can't believe I just did that for the Lord. Man, we need to get back to that kind of stuff. You need to find the hardest thing God could ever ask you to do and say in the name of Jesus and on the authority of the Word of God, I'm going to step out and I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. And you talk about finding value in your life. You'll find it, brother. You say, preacher, you don't understand. Boy, let me give you this. Somebody's always doing what someone said can't be done. Do you know that? Listen to that. That inspires me. Somebody is always doing what someone said can't be done. Man, these people all the time says you can't do that. And then they do it. I don't know how I run across this. How many of you remember iPods? Well, y'all don't remember nothing. How many of you remember Walkmans? (laughs) Well, this was after that. So an iPod was before the iPhone. Right? And it just had the music on it. Y'all remember that? Well, I was sitting around and I saw an old video. This is going to take y'all back. How many of you remember Regis Philbin? What it used to be good is, was it Regis and Kathy Lee? There you go. Kelly was a lot better looking, but Kathy Lee was a lot better. And, and they got on there, Josh, and, and uh, this was, was uh, Kelly. I, that's the other one's name, right? The new one. Kelly Ripper. And she had the iPod and she said, Regis, they're coming out with a new device that's got an iPod and a phone in it together. He said, we'll never fly. How many of you got an iPhone? Raise your hand. Well, it looks like it flew all right. He said, basically impossible. How are you going to put an iPod and a phone together? Somebody's always doing what they say can't be done. So why in the world would we ever look at something God says to do and say can't be done? 
your God can do the impossible. The only thing impossible to you is what's impossible to Him. And last time I read this book, there's nothing impossible with God. You want to find joy in your life? All some of y'all have got hee-haw religion, and you're satisfied with it. I'm not. I'm not interested in gloom, despair, and agony on me. I don't live at BR549. Where, oh, where's the rest of the church tonight? Why did they leave us here all alone? I searched Smithville over. I'm not going to sing the rest of that. I'm going to sing that Sunday morning. I just come up with a whole song. I also have a Shania Twain song that says, Whose pew have your boots been under? Whose church have you torn asunder? Sometimes the pastor wonders, lady. But I'll sing that for you some other time. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's the kind of stuff I sit around and think about. <laughs> you want joy? You want happiness? You want the blessings of God? You're going to have to find His purpose in your life. And do it. And brother, when you do, God will add unto you the blessings of the Lord. What those are, I don't know, but I'll tell you this. Since the day I answered the call to preach, He's never forsook me. I'm going to give you one last thing, but I'm going to get you to stand that way. I, my watch has died, so it's trouble. John was supposed to do this. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I've learned a valuable lesson in the purposes of the Lord. This is good stuff. You might want to get it in your heart. God never asked you to do something that He hasn't already surrounded you with what you need to get it done. I'm amazed at the times that God has asked me to step out to do something that I thought, there ain't no way. And as soon as I step out, I find out there was a way. Amen. Every resource I needed to make something happen was right there. God had it all together. God has put so many things in your hands that you don't even know are there. Until you're willing to step out, you will find out that God has what you need there. We need to remove the word impossible from our vocabulary. Some of you are like a hamster in a wheel. Squeak, 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 squeak. You just... That's all, all you're doing. You feel like you're just running in circles. Come on, you've been there. Say amen. amen. Running in circles. What's the point? What is the point for that poor old thing? Just to wear himself out so he can sleep all day, I guess. But your life is valuable. I'm going to tell you why, and we're going to pray. When God created man from the dust of the ground, God Himself breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man. God put His breath in your body. Let's do something for Him. Do something for Him. When you go home tonight and you sit down in your easy chair, I want you to think about your pastor. I'm going to be sitting down to a plate of eggs and I'm going to say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that Sam's has them 18 for $5 instead of $8 for 12 <laughs> And if John Posk could get them lady hens to go to laying, we'd have some more. <laughs> Y'all know they don't like to lay eggs in the wintertime? I listen to things, I just don't know everything. <laughs> yes. That's the truth. That is the truth. I love it. You're so true, though. That's right. He'll get it done. Amen.
Yep. You're, that is so true, sis. If God wants it done, He'll get it done. And the blessings that come with it be somebody else's to claim. Isn't it amazing? God just asks us to do what He asks us to do, and He blesses us for it. Abundant, Abundant blessings. Find your purpose in life. Don't just wander around like a hamster on a wheel. All right, let's pray. Good stuff tonight. Father, I love you. I thank you for the people of God. I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you for the value of life. <clears throat> God, you've given us a purpose. Lord, not everybody's called to preach. Not everybody's called to, to a sing or, or whatever. But God, I believe you have plans and purposes for every person. Lord, and that can include working the job that they work, but being a witness there. Being an educator, but finding a way to show the kindness of God to children. Working in the city. Working uh, with family. Lord, uh, we don't have to be behind a pulpit to have a purpose. Lord, help, help us find the value of life so that the mundane and the meaningless can be used for the Master. We can find joy in our jobs and happiness in the everyday happenings. Lord, if somebody's here tonight feels like a hamster stuck on a wheel, I pray you'd remind them they're worth more than that. They were fearfully created, wonderfully created. Lord, I love you tonight. I pray these things in Jesus' name. And amen. Somebody thank the Lord tonight for the Word of God. Appreciate you being here tonight. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.